and white people took a lot from black people. Okay. Follow this. The only way you can be saved, according to this theology, if you're an oppressor, is you give back what you took. I, I, I've never taken anything. I've, I've, I've earned what I have. You have to give it back through reparations. You step down from that job you took from someone else. I, I think I've worked hard for this job. I didn't take it from someone else. You have to give back that money you took from someone else. I've earned this money. Do you notice anything that is missing here? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, one, merit. The idea of your character and merit. You earn certain things, but when it comes to salvation, what's missing? Grace. Grace. You're saved by grace. You cannot earn your way into heaven. You can't. There is no deed, no random act of kindness, no amount of money to spread around to others that earns you a trip to heaven. It can't happen. It's earned by God's grace alone. By believing that Jesus died on the cross for you, this is what Christians believe, as an individual, you make the choice. You know what, you know what I think the biggest sin is, the biggest problem we're all going to have when we get up to the pearly gates? Even Christians who say, yeah, I accept the atonement. Did you really, did you really accept that gift? Did you really unload all the stuff that you had done in your life and give it to him? That's how it works. Now, that doesn't, I don't believe that that means that now, you know, like Constantine, who died, was baptized, was like, I got a lot of things, I got to be a king, I got to kill a lot of people, baptize me when I'm dying. I, I think that's kind of, you're trying to work the system there. You really have to have a change of heart. That's where the deeds come in. It's the change of heart. May I quote the book of James, 2.20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? What does that mean? Our work is a demonstration of our faith. We want to concentrate on liberation theology and tra traditional Christianity because one is a perversion. And if you get into the churches and you start teaching some perversion, of it. It's going to be a radically bad outcome. Now, Cohn himself has argued that the Bible is insufficient to know what social justice is. Do you know why? Because social justice isn't in the Bible. He says you need Marxism to understand what Christianity means. Now, I have to tell you, I don't think, and I think most Christians will agree with me, that Karl Marx speaks for God. I don't think so. What do you say we 86 marks here? Thanks, but no thanks. But I also am wise enough to know that people will say, yeah, but Glenn Beck is a Mormon. He's not even a real Christian. You can believe what you want. I will tell you that I am a man who needed the atonement more than most people do. I appreciate the atonement. I accept Jesus as my Savior. I know that I am alive today because I did give all of it to him because I couldn't carry it anymore. But I know the game that people play. So don't take this from me. Not only did we call Anthony Bradley on black liberation theology, I also called Richard Land. He is the president of the Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission. I wanted to make sure that me... That I would be saying the same thing that mainline Christianity would say. Same exact definition of individual salvation as opposed to the perversion of collective salvation. We talked. I said, Richard, salvation is an individual relationship between the individual and God. Through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, right? Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I cannot be saved for you. I cannot save you. I can't even save myself. 
If you're a Christian, you believe that Jesus can save you. If you just tuned in, boy, this has got to be the weirdest damn episode you've ever heard of the Glenn Beck program. There is a point to this, and it is a crucial point that you understand. When Jesus died, he died for everyone that ever lived. If you're a Christian, you believe that. It was a collective act. It was an act that covered the collective, everybody who had lived and everybody who will live, the entire collection of people. But it must be accepted personally, individually. Got it? I want to show you the difference here. Here is traditional Christianity. Jesus died, two thieves over here. He took on the sins of the world by choice. The empty tomb represents that he conquered death. He was not a victim because he did it by choice. He's not a victim. He's a victor. He was a conqueror. He conquered death. Got it? To receive his salvation, you accept his forgiveness of sins and live your life according to his will. That's what every Christianity, Christian church in the country, in the world, believes. This is biblical. Now, the perversion of the concept of collective salvation. You accept his forgiveness. You accept his forgiveness, and then you live your life according to his will. Meaning, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's what it means. This is where it becomes the typical political show or the news of the day show. Let me bring this now to Barack Obama. I will play some audio here, lots of audio, of Barack Obama talking about individual salvation. His individual salvation depends on collective salvation. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, according to liberation theology, it means that salvation and redemption bought by Jesus comes in the form of political and social liberation for minorities from white oppression. Salvation is realized with minorities achieving economic and political parity via redistribution of wealth with whites. Minorities are saved in the sense that white people constantly confess and repent of being racist and meet the economic demands of minorities via the redistribution of wealth as a consequence of, of in some form or another, reparations. Anthony, do I have this wrong so far? That's exactly right. One of the major problems with this theology is that it reduces Christianity to being just a political theology. And as you mentioned earlier, it's so much more than this. It actually involves my own sin and your own sin and our relationship to God. But to reduce it to, to a political theology is, is completely inconsistent with the history of Christianity. I mean, it, it loses the God part of it. By the way, Anthony Bradley, Associate Professor of Theology and Ethics at King's College and author of Liberating Black Theology. So, uh, Anthony, tell me this. Jesus, this is black liberation theology. Jesus demands that, the, in his case, died, Jesus died on the cross as a victim. The empty tomb doesn't really have any meaning to it. Jesus demands the Jew, in his case, or the white, the oppressor, give up his position in life, his money, his goods, to other victims in order to be saved. Is that right? That's essentially right. I mean, what you find is a theology that deals almost exclusively with people's external realities and problems. It doesn't deal with their internal ones, and that's, that's a huge problem. Okay. Now, we're going to take this when we come back. We're going to, we're going to take this um, to the gospel message and the message of being uh, saved by grace, and Marxism, okay? We, we, are, we are looking now at people uh, taking even the, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be African American that does this. This, this, is, this is a liberation philosophy that is just about victimhood. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just victims and the cobbling of power. And I'm going to show you there's a formula that has happened it doesn't matter the race, it doesn't matter the country, it doesn't matter what. It's just the same formula over and over again. The message of punishing the oppressor to grab power will expose that and the link to other groups that are using this next. I know this is 
a, this is a long walk for most Americans, but it is critical because this is a perversion of, uh, of uh, basic American understanding of value, basic uh, misunderstanding of the makeup or, the, uh, or, or God. Um, and it's the, the only way out of this mess is God. And if we lose our way to him, we're in Be encouraged this year with these new books available by Doctor in Theology with Evangelism Strategies, Leon Cabaselli. What would you do if you knew the secret of prayer? Get your copy today of How to Pray by Dr. Evangelist Leon Cabaselli. If you knew who you are, you know what you can do. Get the book, Jesus Christ is My God, by Dr. Evangelist Leon Cabaselli. The book, Christian Development, God Came as Human Being by Dr. Evangelist Leon Cabaselli. Christian Philosophy, Understanding Racial Oppression. These are the academic Christian books to help those who want to learn about Christianity. These are the books that can help people to grow spiritual rather than physically. Leon Cabaselli does his research in theology as a Christian scholar, and one of his research is based on evangelism strategies, and this is what made him to become a doctor in theology, with evangelism strategies as his main subject. Take some time to walk through, author Leon Cabaselli shelves of inspirational reads. Here are four books for daily inspiration and spiritual growth. These books can be bought from www.amazon.com http www.amazon.com or go to any Google just type Leon Cabasile.